Welcome to Wildland Awareness Training for the Structural Firefighter Company and Chief Officer. The fourth and final video in this four-part series provides a basic understanding of wildfire tactics. The goals of this module will discuss how strategy and objectives apply to tactics. Basic ground attacks will be defined, structure preparation and protection will be covered, and simple interface hose lays will be introduced. The sides of a fire triangle represent the three factors of oxygen, heat, and fuel. Removal of any of these three factors cause flame production to cease. In the structure world, water is used to cool the fire, whereas on brush and wildland fires, often because of inaccessibility and lack of water, it is common to separate fuels from the heat to stop the spread of fire using a fire line or a fuel barrier, or to simply allow the fuels to consume themselves. When water becomes more widely available, it is used in combination to mop up remaining hot spots around the perimeter to gain containment, moving systematically further interior until the fire is 100% suppressed. Always work from a safe anchor point, which provides a starting point for any advancement on the fire. This provides a safe escape route and reduces the chance of fire hooking behind you as you progress. If structures are threatened and defendable, Structure protection, also known as point protection, takes priority. This protection can be provided by both structural and wildland engines. This may not include an interior attack on a structure. Depending on resource availability and capability, additional threats, as well as fire size and overall conditions, if a structure is 25% involved or has fire in the overhead, it may not be savable base all actions on current and expected fire behavior. Park engines to facilitate structure protection and most importantly, facing out towards safety. Do not block traffic and avoid parking close to vegetation. Structural prep is a rapid procedure involving the removal of small combustibles next to the structure, closing windows and doors, and clearing vegetation if possible. These are only a few examples. If crews are unable to control the main fire and resources fall to point protection, these resources are in the defensive strategy. Concentrate on saving as many structures as possible, but do not commit to stay and protect a structure unless an immediate safety zone has been established at the structure. Never rely on water for firefighter safety. And take suppression actions within your capability and consider letting fuels consume themselves as opposed to running out of tank water. If the main fire can begin to be controlled before structures are threatened, this is considered offensive strategy. Treatment of burning fuels by applying water directly, or putting in a wet line with a pre-connect or progressive lay, which separate burning fuels from unburned fuels, is an example of direct attack. Fire behavior and fuels are generally smaller and minimal area is burned. It is the safest place to work with firefighters usually able to escape into the burned area or black. However, by being so close to the fire, even though in smaller fuels, firefighters can be hampered by heat, smoke, and flames. Direct attack established from a secure anchor point and working along the flanks toward the head is known as a traditional anchor and flank attack. Be careful not to chase the head of the fire without securing your line back to your anchor. In addition, use caution if fuels increase between yourself and the fire. Indirect attack permits easier work for crews because there is less smoke, heat, and flame contact. This method relies on natural or constructed fire barriers and or fuel types. The disadvantage is increased acreage burned. Consider the following to ensure safety. Fight fire in fuels consistent with you or your engine's capabilities. Use direct attack when possible. Attack the flank with the greatest potential for escape. And if the fire cannot be controlled and resources are limited, utilize the defensive strategy of point protection where possible. Keeping this in mind that multiple strategies may be in play at different locations of the fire, much like in structural firefighting. Recognize topographical hazards. Preserve the area of origin. Be aware of environmental factors such as streams or drinking water reservoirs. 
and recognize education and experience of trained and qualified resources that may be on scene or available. As size and complexity of a brush or wildland fire increases, so do the demands on water. Consider alternative supply methods, potentially with additional alarms that request resources such as tenders or brush trucks. A simple hose lay is similar to our pre-connected lines on our structure engines. It is a hose lay with multiple sections that do not have Ys, water thieves, or lateral lines extending off. Consider using inch and three quarter pre-connects as opposed to booster lines on fast moving fires to allow you to quickly disconnect and reposition the apparatus. Progressive hose lays are primarily used for a quick attack on the fire and always start from a secure anchor point. A progressive lay normally requires you to run along and attach forestry hose from a pack carried on your shoulder or slung over a shoulder. Advantages are fast aggressive attack. To maintain a continuous water supply for progressive lays, consider having additional engines or tenders in play. When the consideration of aerial resources comes up on a fire, ICs must heavily weigh multiple factors before considering the request. Utilizing these resources is not a common occurrence in our immediate region and the cost generally outweighs the benefit in most cases. When requesting such resources, it must be evaluated against several items, some of which include potential cost, flight time, and firefighter as well as civilian safety, which are only a few of the many considerations. An example of when helicopters may be an option is when resources are few and numerous values are threatened. All considerations for helicopter requests shall include consultation with resources on scene that have previous experience working with aircraft. Only trained and qualified red card firefighters shall be utilized as ground contacts where aircraft are involved. All mop-up involves separating, then exposing burning materials from unburned materials to extinguish fires, typically with water but not always. At times, allowing fuels to consume themselves may be more advantageous. Hazards exist even in mop-up. Trees and snags are often continued hazard, but also be aware of rolling materials, hot areas of the fire, and footing issues. This video provided a basic understanding of wildfire tactics, with discussion on how strategy and objectives apply to these tactics. The video also reviewed basic ground attacks, methods of structure prep and protection, and simple interface hose lays. Thank you for watching this series on wildland awareness for the structural firefighter, company, and chief officer. The goal of these modules has been to improve firefighter safety and operations during initial attack on brush and wildland fires.